Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about compasses. So uh, in the real world a compass of course is a small piece of uh, iron that is usually suspended uh, on a needle which points to magnetic north. So in our electronics world we have a component which is called the HMC5883L, HMC5883L, and you can pick up one of these for about two bucks off of uh, eBay, and uh, what this is, is this is, uh, again, a compass module, and it uses the I2C uh, address bus, and uh, from that we can then read uh, the magnetic compass direction. Well, specifically, what we read is three vectors x, y, and z uh, corresponding to the detection of the magnetic field in those particular directions. Now, if our module is, perpend is flat, horizontal to the plane of the Earth, then that means that we will be measuring only the magnetic fields in the x and y direction, which will be our Ma usually due to our magnetic field of the Earth and hence point to magnetic north. Well, that all sounds all very complicated. The reality, though, is it's incredibly easy. You pick up one of these modules, you connect it to your clock and data aligns of your I squared C data, and then you write a program which uh, sends data and reads data from the I squared C data bus, and you're good to go. So, uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, goodness related to this uh, module. It exists at a, a hexadecimal address 1EASY, 1EASY in the I2C address bus. Uh, it's got a number of registers and uh, data read, de configuration registers and data read registers. And when we use this module, we can read back the X and the Y uh, magnetic field strengths as vectors. And then using this equation, this equation, we can then calculate the angle of the magnetic field relative to the horizontal, and that corresponds to the angle to magnetic north. So again, still a lot of words, but uh, this is how it looks when we are wired into our ESP32 environment. Uh, quite literally, all we have to do is connect power to it and connect it to our clock and data lines. From a program perspective, still pretty easy stuff. Uh, the sample program is going to be up on the ESP32 snippets, um, but what it does is we write to the device, we put it into its configuration mode, we specify uh, its default configuration, and then we put ourselves into a while true loop and read the data six bytes of data from the device. Now those six bytes are two bytes each for the X, the Y and the Z. Uh, gives us a 16-bit value for X magnitude, Y magnitude and Z magnitude. And then we calculate the angle, we log the angle, we sleep for a second and then we repeat. And when it all runs, this is what it looks like. So when I run this, we get an angle uh, in degrees relative to magnetic north, the orientation of our device. And although you can't see this, as I turn my ESP32 board on my desk, we see that the angle changes. Turn it the other way, the angle increases. And uh, it's all very, very good stuff. Oh, I pulled a wire. Let me reboot it. But I managed to pull a wire there. There we go, that's much better. And if I change the angle of the device, we see that the angle changes corresponding to magnetic north. Now, of course, if you place a magnetic field of other descriptions near it, this will also read those magnetic fields. So when you're testing this out, make sure you're not testing it near other magnetic sources. Otherwise, your readings either won't change or will be horribly skewed relative to compass readings. But this is uh, this device, this uh, HMC5883L, is probably one of the easiest devices to configure for I squared C. So I suggest you get yourself one of those. They're only a couple of dollars on eBay. Go read the data sheet, have a good study at it, Google on the web, you'll find lots of tutorials. But in this example, I wanted to show you using the ESP32 
ESPIDF, the Integrated Development Framework, how we could use the ESP32 I squared C API to read and write to this device and display the angles. Hope you found something useful there. Sorry about the allergies in my voice, but uh, hopefully that'll be better soon. Talk to you all soon. Bye for now.